All right. Okay. So I've got an alternator that's been taken out of a Honda Civic 2.2 TDCI Mark 8, which is 2005, I think, to 2011. Um, and uh, I know the bearings are shot. I suspect the rear bearing is the one that's hard to get to and the one that's connected to the stator so I suspect it's that one although I'm going to try and get the part number for I've got the part number for this one because it's here the part number for the front one is number six which is there bearing on the front and it is if I was to go through uh, Honda's 18 pounds, I can get I can get that one online for much cheaper, about 10 or 10 pounds. And the rear one is connected to the stator, which means I'll have, I'm gonna have to try and figure out a way of taking it out without destroying it, because I want to be able to find the part number of it. So I might do this in two parts. One you might see this white sheet of paper, these four white sheets of paper and then I might switch over to the garage because I think I might need to press this out using a press and also now I'm just going to bring this close try and hold it steady at the same time. These, are, these part numbers all fit this model so it's a hatchback UK they're all the same, all of these Hondas uh, I think the same one although my one I've read before on there, the sticker and it doesn't say Denso, it doesn't say any of these, it doesn't say Honda, it says Auto Electric. That's what it says. Auto Electric. Electro, Auto Electro. But it must have been changed, I reckon. But all these part numbers are, would be correct for my car. My engine is an N22A2. Alright, so. Like I said, I may not do this all in one day. I've got my 33 splined adapter and it's 20 millimeters across. So I need to pop the cap out. Tools I need, some basic tools, but I need a power gun. What do I call them? Not power gun, the Fleming. Here are the letterings, 13k there, F27, 33 splines. Now the way you test the clutch to see if it's it's uh, good, if you need to jam something like a screwdriver into the veins in there. And the, this, this clutch on this alternator, when it's running normally, it rotates clockwise like so. And I've done it in another video really where I showed you. If you jam it in, and I've tested this here. Right, so if you turn that as hard as you can, that's not going to... See, I didn't want to put anything thin in there in case it snapped off. You don't want to bust the veins as well. It won't turn, but you can... So that won't turn, but you can still rotate this. Like so. So anti-clockwise is fine. As soon as I go for the clockwise, nope, it's stuck. So that's how you know the clutch is usable. And the sound's coming from the rear, the rear part. So when it's at high speed, it's uh, awful. Unbearable. Let's see if this works. I've never tried it before. So it's free to rotate. I'm not really going to hold on to it or anything. I can do use a special tool, but in theory, careful we're doing anything. There's something might like shoot in your eye, which I hope it doesn't. I'm just going to hold it. Uh 
walking behind doesn't want to do that at all. So, something. Right, it's kind of dangerous now. I'm holding on. Alright, okay. So, in the end, you saw what I had to do, just hold on to it. Not the right sort of gloves, but it worked right. Okay, so improvisation, adapt and improvise. Right, so. It doesn't work, I had to readjust. Tool's okay. I need that. So that comes off. Looks fine. Here's my clutch. That looks fine. Put it on one side. And I'll figure out what's next by looking at the diagram. Excuse me for... In fact, what I might do is I might just kind of fast forward, film fast forward without any sound. But that doesn't really matter. It makes no difference. Both are fitted, they are fitted. As you see, there's a good connection here and a good connection on the other side.
Right, so I've got my Draper, Draper tool out. Never really used this tool before, it's like an abrasive, stiff, it's like a very stiff sandpaper. Spit, thing spins at enormous speed. Safety glasses. So we've worked out that this thing is 35 millimeters across, 13 millimeters depth, and if I cut this open, I'll be able to find the internal diameter, and I might be able to get a bearing. But whether I can get it on, I don't know. If it all fails, obviously I'm going to keep the bushes, the brushes. I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep all of this basically, if it all fails at least I can swap things over in the future. Anything I may not keep is this because it will be jammed on there and I'll, well, we'll see in it. So, there's the glasses on, I've just got my reading glasses. That's going to burn isn't it? That's going to burn like mad. Sparks flying everywhere. Put a pair of ordinary gloves on. You see, it'll stop me burning. He's cutting it. Just a little gap just here. At a certain point, you might, the pressure might be. Right, so after significant cutting in, kind of lifting off, looking very carefully that I cut the shaft and hope not. So I didn't cut all the way through, just damaged it. Maybe it slips off. Maybe it just decides to slip off. There we go. My tool broke, by the way. It just gave up the ghost. See, it looks like a little wafer. Biscuit completely gone. Worth me buying some more of them. I think I only had one in a pack. It came in very, very useful. So the inner race, inner race, nearly cut through. I didn't keep that. It might come in useful when we're reinstalling the, the new one. It might come in useful there. Okay, it's something to slip over it, it just fits. Slightly. Just slightly gashed it. Can't even feel it. Just about slightly feel it. Right, so that sits all the way down to the bottom. And uh, now the question is shall I replace the front? Be a case of pressing it out. Uh, let's have a think. Let's measure the inside anyway while we're at it. Right, so inside diameter 
is be, will be the same as that funny looking sleeve. A little bit different. The inside diameter is these are spot on measurements, 15. They're all spot on. Where's my pen? My next course of action depends on whether I can get a new bearing. I know the part number for the outer bearing, but the inner I don't know. So, it will be a case of pressing this out or tapping it out. It's supposed to not tap these. It's supposed to press them. So there is a convenient hole at the top here where if I push back the get a light on it just push back these brushes the convenient tool the convenient hole rather will hold back the brushes that side of it's okay so you just put you just put it put put it back together because that bit came out well, there wasn't it? Yeah, you just push that all in and yank this out, yank something like this out, maybe even a thicker one. I see, I need a longer, slightly longer one. You know, that won't fit. Uh, something like that, anyway. So that's not a problem. So, this is all decision making to see what I would do. So the logic is, if I want to change the brush, those two screws there, just not really wanting to budge. You have to really find the right screwdriver or drill the thing out. Um, looks like one of them drill the thing out kind of jobs. So it's quite irritating if I had to change the brush. Luckily, I don't need to. I'm just going to leave that as it is. So the logic is, leave it. Press the bearing out, the front bearing, and um, see if I can buy well, this flat thing here, the back, buy one at the front as well. This one. So listen carefully, the front bearing. Hear that? I should go to the back of the camera where the microphone is. That two is wearing out, no doubt. Right, I bought this press a while ago and really haven't really used it. So I've got a 10mm socket fits on that little kind of nut on the top. And no, remember I uh, kind of drew in the lines, just remember that it's not exactly on where it is, you know, imagine a pen's diameter kind of causing it not to draw completely flush it's like a millimeter or so above um we've got we will set up hopefully it's put on i don't think there'll be even problems with safety glasses but you never know i hope my press goes further than so put the pressure on it now okay it comes out Forward. Coming out. All right. Here's my marker. So, there's my marker. A bit of heat. Now, when I push the screwdrivers in to check uh, the state of the the clutch, I didn't damage anything. Looks like it anyway. So I've got hold of that, got hold of that. Take this out. 
Looks like, oh, okay, nice. Four screws. I'm going to bring my pack of screwdrivers out. I don't want to round these screws up. And, uh, it's not idiot proof, so it can be put back. I don't know, there's two. I don't know. It can go either way. And do them. Well, we'll make a marker. I will make and put a marker on it just to make sure I put it back in the right way. The same way. Right, let's relieve the pressure off the press. Go back upstairs in a minute. And take off this bearing, which is also worn. You can just hear it starting to go. Alright, let's get back up. Right, this is important now. I need these parts. So it's very important that you get exactly the right screwdriver. See, when I look at those screws, they look slightly different than these screws. But it's worth... I think I've got the right screwdriver. See if I can turn this. No, oh, it's turning. It's not... Just a bit off, so I'm going to leave that alone. If I ever, if the brushes ever go, remind me not to uh, change your brushes because it screws a bit like that. <clears throat> Had to do that, didn't it? Okay, so look at the look at the uh, amount of torque I can generate with a very fat screwdriver. And yet I looked very carefully for exactly. Exactly the right one. Okay, that's gonna round off. Let's get this one. Okay, that's what we want, something like that. Okay, that's gonna round. Oh no, come on. Come on, don't do this. One. Right, okay. Remember my old trick. Uh, my old trick is to turn the big thing, is to take these nuts off. So you take these screws off. The thing is, if I flipped, if I flipped this out, it's not really needed, it will turn. So if let's take off these three first. And why couldn't it just do that? Get my tray. See why shift this. I can shift this on its own. And I could bend them. The other one would come out. Okay. This is what I don't like. It's like this. I'm starting to think about changing into a different one look at this, I got one of these years ago it's got everything like you can imagine uh, somebody you don't really want, he's just one decent screwdriver it's always one isn't it Right, so, I used a uh, angle grinder to grind off them two lugs. We take this, and of course the screw, and I've still got enough thread on, still got enough depth on them, little cross shapes, if I ever screw it up. And I will put 
that one on that one Loctite. There it comes off. Now a little bit of metal to keep. And we have our bearing here. So a little notch there. This should this should pop out. Pressing in obviously outside it tells you what's up on there. What does it say? It says six three zero three R S H. No, six three zero three R S H. So we can measure the big bearing. The black bits in the inside. <coughs> so for inside, it's got six three zero three R S H. It's like an alternator. Three nine, it says there as well. C and U. Six three zero three. R S H. Measure. So a diameter. Don't know the depth yet. Inside diameter is and this one's not perfect. Seventeen point seventeen point seventeen point five outside diameter is Roughly that, which is forty seven, roughly forty seven millimeters. Roughly, don't know the depth because I haven't taken it out yet. Right, time to choose the bearing, and I've uh, already chosen them and bought them. The front bearing or the one the large bearing that's in the case I chose this one and a little bit of it was me having measured the uh, inside diameter the outside diameter and the inside by the way was slightly it wasn't I think I had it at 17.5 and just put the information up 17.5 actually there's no 17.5 ones there's a 17 I think because of the rear the rear end was kind of worn away it kind of worn a half a mil off the bearing itself 
So that was 47. The, the large diamond is 47. The depth was, was it a question mark? But I think it was 14. Let me just check. Yeah, 17, 47 and 14. Um, it fits a Honda. This is it. 31114P01014. I might show you a slightly different number, which is fine. They'll both bring up the same product. And I chose this. It comes from England. Who knows where it's made? So I checked. So this was 1250. The front bearing member was not all that worn, but going though. Uh, there's this code on it. 2RS, I think this 2RS means it's double sealed, one at the top of the bearing, one at the bottom. There's no top and bottom, but rubber seals on both sides it means, that's what it means. And checking this company, Feebest, looks like a real good one. German, so it comes from the German company Feebest GmbH, I think I have heard of them. Fairly cheap bearing, looks like good quality. Now the, the the one that broke, the bearing that broke, the one that's on the stator, the one that was, uh, I had to uh, grind off. I chose, I kind of like, I couldn't really find, I couldn't find one very well. But the first one I found I kind of picked, which was a mis in a bit, of, a bit of a mistake in a way. And, uh, I didn't pick this one, I should have picked this one. So Nippo Denso, Denso Ordinator. This one, if you look at it, I don't know whether it's just a picture they use, but this looks really good. Look at it, even the lettering 2790 is really sharp. Whether or not this is like the standard picture they use, I don't know. But, so it's a PFI bearing, USA. So that sounds really good if it's made in USA. I know people in, the USA are really dedicated people and they make really good products and this looks really beautiful, this bearing. Um, so this wasn't even that expensive really. This was £7.13. Should have got this. You can see the packaging is genuine USA product. And uh, checking this PFI one out, look at this, look at this website. I mean, it, it's just industry standard. Look at it. Amazing. Should have got this, but being late at night, and it look at it, beautiful, beautiful. Being late at night, and uh, I kind of just picked the first one. I just pressed pay. I'm struggling to think whether or not I should just buy uh, this one. Instead, I bought this one bring it back up and that's not as good maybe it's the camera angle I'm not sure it's kind of it just looks a bit rough six pound 99 so a fair bit cheaper but uh, cheapness is not what I really want it's quality so the so the uh, bear when it goes on the stator is uh, 15 times 35 times 13 and we already knew that 15 is the inner diameter 35 is the outer diameter and 13 is the the depth of it and it fits in this case the Honda P1111 PD1004 so it's got all, it will fit all of these so it's, it's got it's got this sort of pop number, I guess. That's good. I didn't really read that before. Double rubber, so that's good because the because the other one, the the USA one, said it was double rubbered. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can go back. Forward. Let me see where it says double rubber. Show you look, it says all this. The USA one compatible, blah blah blah. On the 
rubber seals, each bearing have the suffix 2RS. They have lip rubber seals on both sides. So it, it just tells you a bit more. But I checked out this company as well. Because I was going to think, I was thinking maybe should I buy, I'm still thinking uh, maybe I should swap over to the American one. It's got all these. Not sure why it says e email removed by eBay. But then I checked out this company to reassure myself. They've got a distribution in Lincolnshire in, in England, which seems to be manufacturing a lot of bearings. Uh, Wilco. So they've got a nice website as well. Not as good as an American one. But I had to translate this. Woco is a Polish company that was created in, a, in the basis of knowledge and skill with people many years of great passion. Now I like that. Right, it's the next day. I've been giving it a lot of thought. So I've ordered a spare bearing. This feels kind of smooth to be honest. It's making some noise. Which means it's on its way out. See that little groove in there? Whoops. See that little groove? If it was three on each side, on this side, knock that, knock that, knock that, and it'll come out. But there's not. That's the problem, isn't it? So I need something that'll go on the outside edge. Because I don't want to even press that on there with the press. It'll probably damage this and warp it. So I need something to go around the outside edge. Let me look for something. Right, so I came to the conclusion I have to do so I'm not going to really tap it out. So I've got a little socket on top. It just fits on the inner race, which you should never do. When pressing in, I've got the option of pressing on the outer race, of course. So this is just going to destroy it. Right, I'm not going to do any more. It's coming nicely, but the temptation is to keep doing it. See that? Because I wanted to make sure I can still, if it was in there, I can still just wrench it out with a lever, out, lever this out, and then not the rest of it. It all came out in one go. Excellent. So, there's hardly any resistance now it's just gonna sit in there nicely and I'm just gonna finish it off so this is a 20 ton press it's not very expensive in the UK let me just um, shorten the time right back to it confident just pressing that straight out came out in one piece not get stuck as well and I used my ball bearing not ball bearing uh, ball joint removing pack where I found this thing here that's not bad actually not good enough so see that Slight noise, and uh, it's not even really that bad. But I pressed it out, I bought a new one. Job is done. I'm, again, I'm going to keep this. I might keep that in my drawers. Anyway, next thing is when I, I'm going to be pressing them back in. I haven't damaged the outer casing of that at all. So my ball bearing, lower ball joint removing, installing kit, removing and installing kit, is this. And I've used it in one of my other videos before. And this is the one that fits, this one in, it fits in there. You get the same kit. 
21 piece master adapter. All right, I've got pounds. my old bearing here. My new one is in the freezer. And I'm just going to keep, I'm not going to heat this one up or anything to expand it because you never know, the expansion might decrease the diameter. Now I've realised what this little slot is for. This little slot is so, so that you can view the uh, when the bearings are being fully compressed in. And if I remember rightly, there was a tiny bit of a gap. Tiny bit of a gap when it was fully compressed. So, make sure you've got ready appropriate. I mean, I looked at my ball joint compressor uh, kit, extractor kit, and uh, it wasn't quite right, but I found this 20, 36 mil socket. So it will go in there, everything's set up, it's going to go pressing straight down. Now, as a point, one thing you can do, instead of having a press, is to... The e, my previous scene, you've seen me press this, the bearing out, this old bearing out. But you can actually put a socket in there and just knock it out. Because it came out fairly easy, just make sure it's nice and smooth. If this bearing was totally trashed, then probably not then you have to think it's only because this bearing was pretty much one piece you can kind of knock it out and you can do the same use a appropriate socket knock it back in obviously freeze the bearing to give you the smallest uh, bearing you can get because it's cold well I'm going to pop into the fridge and I'm going to get uh, my bearing out and I'm going to quickly place it on and quickly press it so the front bearing I hope you can read is this Free Best, Free Best, German, German make AS63032RS, so double seal ball bearing, 17 times 47 times 14. And that's probably the best way of doing it, the size of it, right? So freezing cold. So it's been sitting in the freezer and it's kind of almost sits much better than the other one. I don't know if you just noticed that. So now it's a case of pressing it straight in. I'm hoping it will just level out even though there's slight inconsistencies. I've slightly greased the, the inside of the casing as well. Quickly while it's still cold. And of course, don't do it too much or it might break something. Don't press it too much. Too much. Well, wait till it kind of evens out. I could bust the bearing by pressing it too hard. There you go, like so. Wonderful. That bit done. As soon as I felt it tighten up, I just left it. And looking through the gap, that's how it was. Yep, perfect. Just to modify that screw, and I'll screw that back on. And uh, I'm gonna keep this, I'll keep my old bearing in it. And uh, what I'm gonna do, put old and put worn, no worn, and that. Yeah. I'll put uh, Ford alternator focus no it's not, it's not focus it's the Honda isn't it Honda right okay so my next job is my next job is to put the outer frame back on I mean the thing that holds it in back on put a little bit of Loctite on that screw that's a bit worn because I won't be able to tighten that enough I should hold it in so I'll put the four in a simple case of tightening this up of course a clean screw before I did that. Appropriate screwdriver. 
why is it important to pick the right screwdriver? The wrong one can really mess things up. I'm tighten this dodgy one up first. I should have because I tighten that, I should tighten this one, shouldn't I? This fits quite well. I should put Loctite on all of them, really. Right, so waiting for the other, the other, the other bearing to arrive. I'm not going to do these super tight or anything. Loctite will help this one. Okay. All right, I'm waiting for the other one. Well, here it is then. My other small bearing has arrived, and uh, it's time to see if it fits. I need. I'm thinking of getting a socket, just some brake cleaner. Just going to clean around here. Contacts are. Just going to get rid of any carbon, just to help it conduct electricity. And like I said before, I can as I flick and run my nail through it, I can feel copper ring, a layer of copper ring. I'm gonna clean all this up, and I'm also gonna clean the edge of this up. Brake cleaner. Thinking of filing it a bit, or sandpapering it, because we won't need it. I'm going to get a really clean, clean surface. Notice there's a line, there's a piece of metal that runs the way through. I don't know if any significance. So obviously if I file this down a little bit, it'll be, or sandpaper it down, it'll be easier to install. Right, so here's the inner bearing. Uh, I think I already gave you the part number. That's the company it's from, the Polish one, Woco. They're on about something else here, maybe some sort of disinfectant, but this card, new car parts. That's the website. That's the email if you want to email them. So, looking at this, I'm quite happy with the quality of it. Much better than in the picture on eBay. You can see that. Bravo 1588 Delta or 89 Delta. 89 Delta or 69 Delta. Very hard to read. So Bravo 15 <coughs> excuse me, 69 Delta. MWBS. They look identical, both sides do. Sometimes there's like one bit rounder than the other bit. I'm just looking with my eye. It looks the same. But I'm gonna keep that on top. I'm gonna logo on top. Double sealed, right? So this should, I mean, I should really freeze this to make this smaller. So, simply be, need a socket. It's the right size. I feel that inner race. See that inner race? Something like that. That's perfect. See that? And it's a deep socket, so it's going to push in somewhat. And I think the bags of room to spare. So I'm just going to skew with it. Right, let's get out. Now you can, you should be able to tap it, really. 
I bet if I was to go in, maybe not. I'm going to take that out again and I am going to press it in. You should be able to just line it up. See, these veins will do. They're going to sit nice and horizontal, these veins on the press I'm just going to press it in right I'll read out the amount of pressure needed so I haven't frozen it just using my press uh, this rubbish out. it's not even contacting yet Going down, it's not even registering any ton tonnage yet. A few hundred grams, maybe like 20 kilos, maybe. It's nowhere near, you know, like one ton or anything like that. So I'm watching it. And I'm waiting for it to hit the bottom, where it should just stop. Really, I should have um, stopped it. I should have made sure it checks, make sure it fits. I mean, obviously it fits this shaft, but make sure it fits the, the hole before I pressed in. That was illogical. Try and do things the most logical way possible. But that's on anyway. Right, so, I've greased the inside. Grease that a little bit. Don't forget to put this ring back in. Now, of course, there's the brushes, they look quite good. Uh, so I need to insert that little screwdriver. And I was thinking of many different ways of doing this. Uh, the most obvious one is screwdriver. A very tiny one. I was thinking of maybe putting a fishing line in and just tying it back. And then I thought it wouldn't work because uh, as I push it back, the fishing line will be in contact. So I need something quite long. So maybe even like maybe one of these. Not too long but quite long. Right. This thing first. Get a little washer in there. So I've got that. Let's see. They're kind of mostly pulled back. Okay. Just wondering if I can get a better shot so it's right over the top. Right, so it is. See right now, I can feel that pushing it back all the way, and it's it kind of just if I, if I haven't pulled the landing key all the way down, it kind of sticks out. But if I put it all the way down, it kind of clicks, and it's really out of the way. So thing you do is to pull it back, let the landing key hit the side, put it down, it clicks. And that's, that's as flush as the Allen key would go. So, right now. Okay, so that's deliberate. I'm doing that to take it out. So that's fine. That's fine. Thing to do is use that press again. In fact, believe it or not, I'm just going to move the camera out. There's a little groove, there's a second little groove. See in there? See that? Just on top there is a little kind of 
little slot for the for this little handling key to go in. See that? So it's sitting in there all by itself and it's in perfectly arranged right now. Also get yourself one of these uh, presses if you can. This is a tabletop one now, built a, a platform for a wooden platform. <coughs> Excuse me. But I would say get yourself one of these, right. Perfectly placed pin which is the Allen key, the smallest Allen key. Drop that in there. Remember how much that's poking out. Fingers whip. Right, so I'm just gonna drop that in there. I'm just gonna watch the bottom of that Allen key. It's dropped in, right? Allen key did not move. flat spot mind you don't want anything dropping Right, make sure spinning nice and freely, you make sure that washer is in there. Double check if you have to. There's a 10mm socket. So there's that pin. Still there. Take it out. Pin's poked out a little bit because I must have touched it from behind from underneath. Put it until it's just flush, ready to pop out. Washer's in there, double check because you don't want to be able to you don't have to do this. Spinning freely. Pin same spot. Double check again. Sitting nicely. I couldn't get. It's just not wide enough for this thing. So I'm gonna. Fortunately, gonna have to half watch it by holding it a bit. It's just about catching just there. So it's not gonna go in square. Like that. Flat. I might just kind of half hold it. This is a brake pad for, for a little bit of depth down there. And let's drop the camera so you can see it. It would help if I tightened the valve that's what you need that's going kind of tight very tight that's too many tons here Jesus I tried squashing it in and whoa it didn't work you saw the saw the problem there this whole thing snapped off and um, this thing in here is slightly distorted kind of crushed and I used a pair of pliers to squish it back I checked inside the diodes because in there the are di the diodes I haven't seen any damage and uh, so what I've decided to do, since this bracket just holds the oil uh, shield in, I've gone and I've gone. What I've gone and done is, okay, this should just well, it fits in there quite nicely actually. See that? I ground that down because it was like making it was like hitting the side because the inside of that had been squashed. So game plan two. I've kind of just pushed that in by hand and it's kind of gone in. Uh, game plan 2 calls for this. 
remember I made those two marks. I'm just going to tighten the four bolts and squash it together like that. And I get in you know, like, the 8mm, so 8mm, 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 four bolts or three bolts. I'm going to do it that way. Right, so we've actually put the, bolt, the bolts on the wrong way. So we've with the bolts on the right way no need to try and squash the uh, head in I think in fact I think it might have been sitting in there properly anyway so it kind of slipped in I didn't realise it had already gone through the bottom if you know what I mean got a feeling that's what happened but the, these four bolts tightening these four bolts as you go is going to be strong enough to push that bearing in for sure no need to squash it in no need to hammer it in no need to bust anything off. No need that that includes no need then to have to do any drastic uh, very drastic actions of uh, shaving the stator arm down. No need to do any of that. So tighten these up evenly. It's in there. And look at the previous marks in the right place as well. So sitting in there nicely. metal there to hold it, it should be fine. Of course try not to do that or do what don't try not to do what I did. Sometimes things go wrong right? Don't do things as you hear I was sneezing, don't do things when you're ill because that's gonna cause problems. That's rotating lovely and it's not catching. I just shave all that state arm off. It's not catching at all. So that is in. I don't know where my previous mark is. Just why did I? Hmm. Did that poke out more? If that poked out more. I can't tell. It's all the way in. I do believe. So it was when I got it. Obviously if that didn't poke out enough, I can wind this on, I guess pull at it. And then I think that's that flush, if I remember right. Yeah, that's that flush. That looks okay. Sounds super smooth. Time to pull this out. That's on. Connect everything back up top. Funny little. Hmm. Sure that sat right like that. Sure that was like that. And there's not much left to it really. Apart from let's hope I didn't bust anything when you saw it go crush.
improvising the deck. I think that one that was one where the latch was, wasn't it? With the cabling. It was a slightly different knot. Let's get the old power tool on it. Finding it this time, so I'm just gonna no uh, no hold it on. See if it happens. Nah, I have to hold it on. I think it's already done. You go snap, snap. That's what does it. It's an impulse that does it. It's flush again. Right. Time to put the cap back on. I bet you can, there's a tool you can hold that bolt at the bottom and then do it. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. If I stick something in there and I do it, it's going to just snap everything. Everything is snap. Do it by hand. Do it by hand. Right. James saying that you know where it snapped. There's the veins. As I do this, I can see it spinning. Okay. So it should go, it's not really slipping, it should go clockwise, right? Anti clockwise. That's the clutch. It should catch in clockwise. Tight, actually. Tight as it will go. There we go. That's smooth. Cap back on. Clutch is on. Right. Right, that's the end of this video. It weren't perfect. The mistake I made was not getting the bearing, the new bearing. And just dropping it in the hole see how it fit if I realize it dropped in quite easily I wouldn't have been pushing it with a vice because it probably would just it should probably just drop straight to the bottom uh, so that was a mistake I made instead well, I put it on the shaft first didn't I the small bearing so that was a mistake uh, I always do things as logical as possible I'm not well as you can hear me sneezing so that causes you to not think properly so I should have just checked it fits really well you know, they realise as you put it in, it's going to fall straight in. When it falls straight in, you don't need to press it. And second thing, if it didn't fall straight in, use these four. Use these four long bolts to tighten up, and that should squeeze it in. You don't need to press it in. The, the other one, you, the other one up here, the first, the large one, I did need to press it. Uh, and even then, you could probably hammer it with a, a correct uh, socket. So, thanks for watching the video. Let's see what the alternate uh, sounds yeah, like. Uh, I hope you're
cranky down there. That's the crank. I feel it sounds really good. All right. So, let's test if I've ruined my flaming uh, gearbox. I think I have. Wheels off the ground. Let's see what it sounds like. Very idle. It sounds like. I can't hear anything here. Sounds big. Sounds like something in there. We don't know. Right, anyway. Oh, no, yeah. Back on, no sounds. 